Hey there guys, Nordic Warrior here, back with a video. So, it's Monday afternoon and in about an hour or two I'm going to be heading to the gym. So, um, before I do, I figured I'd have a little cup of tea and uh, make a video because I'm just chilling out with nothing to do. So, a few people asked me in the aftermath of the card that took place this past weekend, a few people asked me to talk about Deontay Wilder in a video and basically sum up my thoughts on what happened to him and what I think about his career and whatnot. But to be perfectly honest, look, I've made many videos in the past about Deontay Wilder and I'm sick to death of even talking about the guy. Um, you guys know exactly what I think about Deontay Wilder. I've covered it many, many times in the past. And another reason why I'm, I'm not even going to bother is because yesterday Del Boy made a video which was uh, almost an hour long, where he did a full audit and full breakdown of Deontay Wilder's entire career and his entire resume. And I am going to leave a link in the description to this video, to Del Boy's video, because it really was an excellent video. And yeah, he just, to, to me, he perfectly summed up Deontay Wilder's career better than anybody else I've ever seen in terms of going through the entire resume and breaking it down. So, yeah, go check that video out if you if you want to hear, um, you know, a more recent, updated breakdown of Wilder. Now, me personally, I'm, I'm not going to bother. Um, what I did want to talk about, however, and what this video is probably going to be about, is um, what I believe was the co-main event on the card, and that was Daniel Dubois uh, defeating Philippe Hergovic in a minor upset. So, in the aftermath of this fight, uh, people are blowing a lot of smoke up Daniel Dubois' arse. Uh, they're talking about how amazing a performance it was, how he's now got a great chin, and how he's got so much heart, and how he's such a great fighter, how he's one of the most improved fighters in the sport, and how he's going to beat Anthony Joshua, and he's going to beat this guy and that guy, and, oh, man, like like, people are just losing their minds over this, so... Look, I've talked many, many times in the past about the reactionary nature of normie boxing fans and how all it takes is one good performance or one bad performance or one thing, one development for them to just completely flip the switch on the narrative of a particular fighter. You know, these people can't really think for themselves. And it's funny because I know there's already about four or five trolls um, seething right now and getting ready to fight to, to write in the comment section. You predicted that Fury would a bit out sick. I know there's there's already about twenty people probably about to type that, but let me stop you there because it's really funny how when you get a prediction wrong in this community, it becomes big news, right? It it, it kind of defines you for a while, but when you get predictions right. Nobody bats an eye. It's basically crickets. Like, for example, going into the Daniel Dubois, um, Jarrell Miller fight, when everybody, and I mean everybody in the YouTube boxing community, picked Jarrell Miller, despite the fact he was the underdog, everybody in this community picked Jarrell Miller to destroy Daniel Dubois. Everybody said he was going to be too tough his work rate was going to be too much, and he was going to force Daniel Dubois to quit. What did I say? I said, Daniel Dubois, I was the only person in the in the YTBC that said this. I said, Daniel Dubois was going to put a beating on Jarrell Miller, and he was going to stop him late. I said this when no one else was, but it's funny because I don't recall any of these trolls, um, you know, even bringing that up or saying anything in the comments about it. You know, that was just... Again, like I said, when you get one wrong, it defines you. It becomes everything that represents your channel. But when you get one right, it's crickets. No one cares, you know. <laughs> Even when, you know, you, you you look at a situation logically and rationally and you stick to your guns, you stick to what you know about these fighters and you don't let their most recent performance or most recent mainstream narrative surrounding them, you don't let that define you. You know, you don't let that define your pick. Sorry, I've got a bit of a sore throat. That's why I'm making this work up a tea. 
So yeah, to, to all the seething trolls that are about to write in the comment section, Yo, Brian Nicodine, that fury I would be too seek. You know, in your Dexter voice. Um, just have a little think about it. Have a Look in the mirror, have a bit of self-awareness. And maybe, maybe what would be a, a wise thing for you to do, for your own absolution and for your own well-being, how about... First of all, you know, compare my prediction record to yours. I mean, that would be a that would be a good place to start for a bit of self awareness. And not only that, think to yourself: Why is it that you're on my channel watching my videos and I'm not on yours? There's a reason for that. There's a reason you're here on my channel watching my content, and why I've never been on yours and never will. So um, yeah, that should that should put your life situation and your um, emotional and mental well-being into perspective, shouldn't it? But I digress. Let's not talk about that anymore. Let's talk about the fight. So Daniel Dubois wins in an upset against Philippe Hergovic. Now, going into the fight, I, like most people, suspected that if it was all above board, Philippe Hergovic, who was more... I wouldn't necessarily say he was more proven in terms of his resume, because as I've talked about many times in the past, Philippe Hergovic's resume is pathetic. Like, this guy is one of the worst cherry pickers in the heavyweight division. I mean, his last fight was Mark Damore. Come on, man, seriously. So, yeah, um, I've talked in the past about how Philippe Hergovic, to me, is a fighter who seems to lack ambition. He seems to lack motivation. And he doesn't seem to really want to challenge himself and develop as a fighter. And I, and as I said in the aftermath of his fight with uh, Mark Demore, in my opinion, Philippe Pergovic is a fighter who's actually gotten worse since the amateurs. I actually think he's regressed since the amateurs. And that's due to too many walkover easy fights and, and not really developing as a fighter. You know, it's, it's kind of like Deontay Wilder. You spend your entire career fighting jobbers you know, you're going to end up um, getting exposed at world level or, or even before world level. You know, same thing happened to Arslanbek Mahmudov, which I talked about in uh, that same video, I believe. So, yeah, um, Philippe Hergovic ne was never a big believer in him, never rated him that highly. But I acknowledge that he had talent. But I did suspect if it was all above board, he would have enough to beat Daniel Dubois. Because Daniel Dubois, as I've talked about before is one of the most cowardly, one of the most pathetic, one of the most weaselly, and one of the most, to, to me personally, he's one of the most scummy fighters I've ever come across. So when he fought Alexander Usyk, and again, I kind of ranted about that in my post-fight review for that fight. I'll, again, I'll leave a link in the description section to that video. So he, he went in there against Usyk, and... In the build-up to the fight, he said in several interviews, I'm going to win this fight by any means necessary. If that means I have to cheat, if I have to headbutt, if I have to low blow, I'm going to do it. And you had the entire British boxing media, people like David Hay, people like Carl Frampton, all the, you know, media brown noses in the British boxing fraternity, all saying the same thing. They were saying Daniel Dubois needs to be dirty, he needs to be rough. He needs to make it a dirty fight. He needs to cheat. He needs to foul. They were all saying this in the build-up. Go, go and watch the interviews. They were saying Daniel Dubois needs to be dirty to win. right? So Daniel Dubois goes in there. The fight's in Poland. right? So it's in Europe where you've got neutral officials appointed, uh, appointed by the sanctioning body. right? So a referee and three judges who are there neutrally to do their job. Daniel Dubois goes in there. <clears throat> and he, let me just have a sip of my tea, he goes in there, and he realises, probably in the first 20 seconds of that fight, that he can't do nothing with Usyk, that Usyk is completely schooling, humiliating, outboxing, outlanding, and dominating Dubois, Dubois just goes in there, he's like a caveman, you know, just trying to, you know, just standing in front of, of Usyk like Frankenstein, has no idea what to do with the feints, is getting pieced up with the jab, he's getting hit to the body, can't handle the lateral movement, can't penetrate the high guard. So what does Daniel Dubois do? What does this dirty, cheating thug decide to do? This coward, what does he decide to do? He decides to just, in the first round of the fight, he decides, 
I'm just going to start targeting the dick, right? So he starts leading with the with the jab, right, feinting it, and then throwing an uppercut, a scooping uppercut, targeted directly at Usyk's balls, just hitting the guy in the balls blatantly, and he landed about twenty something low blows through the duration of that fight, and in in I believe it was either what the fifth or the sixth round, whatever it was, he hit Usyk so hard below the belt that Usyk decided, you know what, I'm sick of this. And he took a knee and he motioned to the referee that he was that he was hit low, which he was. All you gotta do is look at the replay. Now, the commentators, again, I talked about this in my uh, post fight review, the commentators initially, Richie Woodall and whoever else it was, agreed that it was a low blow because they saw with their own eyes in real time that it was a low blow. And when they saw the replay, yeah, listen to Richie Woodall's reaction when he sees the replay from the more clear angle, it was clearly a low blow, and he and he he clearly acknowledges it. Then Carl Frampton, who was I think what the unofficial scorer or whatever, or he was in the studio. I, I don't know. He was part of the broadcast, but he wasn't part of the main commentary team. He jumps on and says, "No, that wasn't a low blow. That was a body shot. Daniel Tabasha, but a heavyweight champion, he was robbed." And then all of a sudden, Richie Woodall. And the other commentators just decide to change their mind and be like, no, you know what? Carl Frampton is right. That was a, that was borderline, whatever that means. That was borderline. He should be the champion. So that that was the narrative they decided to run with. You know, it was a narrative started by Carl Frampton and the rest of the commentators just decided to change their mind and decided to run with it. So yeah, Dan, Daniel Dubois, U Usyk gets up. Daniel Dubois gets warned by the referee for hitting low. Doesn't have a point deducted, whereas he should have. But he gets warned by the referee for hitting low. And he realises it's not going to go his way. He's not going to be allowed to cheat. He's not going to be allowed to... Fa you know, this spoiled brat realised that he wasn't going to be allowed to cheat his way to victory. So he just checked out. He mentally checked out. He, he decided from that point on... I'm not going to throw many more punches. I'm just going to find a, a, a soft spot on the canvas and I'm going to quit. And that's exactly what he did. He quit like an absolute bitch. He wasn't even hurt. He wasn't even that gassed. He just had no heart whatsoever. And he was so dejected by the fact... You know, again, it was like spitting his dummy out, throwing his toys out the pram, spoiled little brat. Because he realised he wasn't going to be allowed to cheat to get the win... He's like, I don't want it anymore, and he just quit like a little bitch. And I said in the aftermath of that, that that was going to be the narrative on Daniel Dubois. Like, the mainstream media were going to take the, he w it was a body shot, it was borderline, he should be, he it wasn't a low blow. They they they're going to take that, and they're going to run with it, and that's going to be how they market Daniel Dubois from this point on in his career. He's going to be the real heavyweight champion. Usyk doesn't like it to the body. And, you know, Daniel Dubois should have been the unified heavyweight champion that night. And and they, they were just going to run with that for the rest of Dubois' career. He was going to have a bunch of set-up fights. And, you know, he was going to be promoted heavily. And, you know, when, when Usyk or Fury or whoever retires and vacates the titles, you know, whatever happened between them, they were going to make sure that Dubois fought for a title, you know, maybe a vacant title or whatever. And, you know, they were going to market him, like I said, as the real heavyweight champion. So that that's, pre that's pretty much, um, it, it sums up that situation. And it kind of defines who Daniel Dubois is as a fighter. You know, he's a coward, he's a cheater, he's a thug, and he's a fraud. And I don't think anybody can deny that realistically and, and honestly. So... Let's talk about the Hergovic fight. So he goes in there against Hergovic. He gets outboxed. He gets outlanded. He gets beaten up. But unlike the Usyk fight, where you had a referee who was there to do his job, a referee who was there to officiate the fight, what we had in this fight was we had a referee who was there to ensure that Daniel Dubois came through with the victory. So whenever it wasn't going Daniel's way, whenever he wasn't having you know, a lot of success, because he lost quite a few of the rounds, again, he was being outboxed and outlanded, you know, he just decided to charge in there with his head, and bust up Hergovic's face, open multiple cuts, it was like Andre Ward against Mikel Kessler, it was that kind of performance from Daniel Dubois, and, you know, he, he was gifted a, a premature stoppage, caused by cuts that were caused by headbutts, and, um, again, Philippe Hergovic being... 
again, being a guy who's kind of dejected as it is, you know, a guy who has no ambition, doesn't have great stamina, you know, doesn't really, doesn't really see himself as a top heavyweight, you know, he's kind of in boxing just to make money, just a mercenary, I've said that in the past about Philippe Hergovic, boxing is basically just his job, he just checked out, he's like, okay, whatever, I, I'm not supposed to win this fight, he's going to keep headbutting me, it's going to ruin my career, you know, I, I think he, he quit in the fight to, to preserve his health for the next one, basically, for the next payday, but, you know, kind of like a journeyman would, you know, a journeyman who's going to fight next week, That that's kind of, Philippe Hergovic, even though he was an undefeated contender going into this fight, he has a journeyman mindset, you know, like a guy who is just in it to make money, and it just seemed to me like he didn't care. He he was it was inconsequential to him if he lost, as long as he got paid and sometime down the line gets another big payday. Like I'm assuming he's hoping to get an Anthony Joshua fight sometime down the line and you know, he, he could have fought Usyk. Again, this is something I've talked about in the past. He could have fought Usyk. He could have pushed for that fight, but he obviously didn't think he could beat Usyk. You know, he wanted to get a, a big retirement payday fighting Anthony Joshua or someone, so or Tyson Fury or whoever. So, um, yeah, uh, in the aftermath of this fight, and look, I, I suspected that the certain fighters I expect to have fanboys defending them. I expect that whenever I make a video about Canelo or whenever I see like um, someone else make a video about Canelo where they cover a situation, I expect to see people crowing in the comment section. I expect to see fanboys saying, where are all the haters at? And, and, and you know, giving it the big one in the comment section. I didn't expect to see that for a fighter like Daniel Dubois. But I've noticed that Daniel Dubois somehow seems to have a dedicated fan base of commenters who are going absolutely insane right now, saying he's going to beat Usyk, he's going to beat Fury, he's going to beat AJ... He's the real heavyweight champion. Like the the media narrative that was spun by Carl Frampton and the British boxing fraternity in the aftermath of that Usyk fight has really taken effect, and it's really gotten into the head of some of these normies, and uh, they've now really jumped on Daniel Dubois, and he's the next great hope. That's what it seems like to me. He's the next, um, you know, he's the next Devin Haney. You know, the the next. Um, Guillermo Rigondeaux, you know, a, a, a lot of these guys have jumped on him, you know, a lot of the black tards and whatnot seem to have jumped on Daniel Dubois, and yeah, they seem to really think that this guy is a is a legit uh, championship level heavyweight, because he beat Jarrell Miller, a literal bum, a, a, a feather-fisted punching bag, more, a morbidly obese punching bag who can't punch, who'd never beaten anybody of note, who, who just got through his career by being big and heavy and roided up to the gills. Because he beat that guy, and because he was able to Andre Ward-style headbutt his way to victory against a visibly dejected and visibly declined Philippe Hergovic, <laughs> they now think Daniel Dubois is like a future heavyweight champion, or he's he's the real heavyweight champion, he's going to take over the divi- Oh, Normies are funny, man, they really are. And again, I don't know shit about boxing because, you know, I stuck with my old prediction. Because going back years, I always favoured Fury to beat Usyk. Even though I, I picked Usyk to beat AJ, I, none of these guys were around then, were they? Um, you know, picked Usyk to beat Gassiev, picked him to win all his... Bi- I picked him to win every fight, every single fight prior to Fury. But because I picked Fury, I don't know shit about boxing. And, you know, I, I don't... I don't um, I don't know how good Usyk is, apparently, I, I don't know, man, that's, that's his community, and, um, look, like I said earlier, to those people, you know, these people who, uh, who I make seethe, there's a reason, there's a reason you're on my channel watching my content, and I'm not on yours, there's a reason for that, okay, um, why that reason is, listen, I, I could sit here for a while, and, theorize a bunch of reasons why that is that you're on my channel, but I'll let you figure it out for yourself why you're here consuming my content, okay, because th- there's a reason, and if you figure that reason out, I'm telling you, it'll make your life a lot better, it'll help you, and um, it'll give you a certain amount of self-awareness that'll serve you in the long run, so yeah, uh, Daniel Dubois, 
what do I think is going to happen with him next? Well, I, I think, as many people have already pointed out, uh, Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn have got, like, dollar signs in their eyes, or pound signs, I guess. And they're looking to make a big heavyweight title extravaganza for that vacant IBF title between um, Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois. Because um, that's a massive fight if they can market it right. I mean, two big heavyweight black guys in the UK. You know, it's kind of like a heavyweight version of um, Eubank versus Ben. You know, it's it's kind of... That's kind of what they're going for. They want to build a big rivalry between those two. They want to talk about how they used to spar and how um, Dubois lived in AJ's shadow and all, all the manufactured crap that nobody cares about except ignorant normies. Um, look, guys... Just get over it. Alexander Usyk is the heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, he He's the best right now. He's proven it. He's lineal. He's undisputed. And um, Daniel Dubois, Anthony Joshua, the, these these are just great hopes. You know, these are just hype jobs. That's all they are. Um, and yeah, that's all I have to say. Yeah. I'm assuming this video will trigger somebody. Um, could care less if it does or not. I've, I've got stuff to do. Um, going to the gym later. Um yeah, try and get my, my squat and my deadlift up and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys and uh, God bless.